somebody does it better. How great is that? What? How great is that? Oh, yeah. Like, today, wrestling promos still aren't that good. But that's because... That's because he was allowed to cut loose and do what he wanted. And now everything's super scripted. But yeah, you can continue streaming if you want. Just figured we'd give Froggy a little time to get back. A yep. Do you mean? Ooh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, gotta say like Randy Savage. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. And he was an actor as well. He was in Spider Man. Remember that? Have you seen the South Park Randy Savage clip? Oh, with, um, Strong Woman? Yeah. Yeah, that's fucking amazing. I don't want to talk about my transition. I'm just here to buy something like that. Yeah. Do you remember him as Bonesaw in Spider-Man? Uh, no. Yeah, in the first Spider-Man, the Sam Raimi one, where, uh, Peter Parker has to wrestle some guy in the ring. The guy who wrestles is Randy Savage. Huh. That's cool. Here, I just sent you a gif of it to remind you. training to get your voice to do that. Yep. I bet. Yeah. You're going nowhere. <laughs> Fucking love that scene. I got you for three minutes. <laughs> Randy Savage is good, but he's not Spider-Man. He can't stick to the ceiling. The thing I hated about that movie was that Peter Parker didn't invent the web shooters. He just... Yeah, I haven't seen that one. But this one, like... The fact that P Peter Parker invented the web shooters, that shows how smart the guy is. Yeah, the ones with Tom Holland, he invents them also. Pretty nice. Yeah. I've been a DC guy for years, ever since I got this Batman tattoo. Nice. I like yeah, but then they started coming out with all these shit movies. Yeah. I posted a meme to uh, 
the funny pictures and memes channel a while back where this guy said uh I thought I posted it, but apparently I didn't. The guy said, um, I hate the new Wonder Woman. I think that it sends the wrong message to girls. And somebody said, what the fuck do you think is wrong about it? Do you, do you think it's wrong that girls can be strong and powerful and this and that? And the guy said, no, I think it's wrong that they should expect more good movies from DC. face pain. Oh shit, you got a camera too on Twitch. Yeah. So. Hey, hey. Yeah, that's why he's standing on a statue or a, a pile of creamers, that promo I showed you. You gotta admit, even she's probably doing a Randy Savage impression there. Right. Oh, I'm back. Welcome back. Welcome back. You know what she's gonna do as soon as she's done at this shrine? Step into a Slim Jim! <laughs> <laughs> I'll send you the promo too. My daughter asked me to bring her here. They told me not to stand by her. Guess I'm not really not. Man, his name is Spreadsheet Alpha. Of course he's not cool enough. What a dork. <laughs> Nerd alert. Did I ever tell you this experience I had with a guy who had a tracheotomy? I was working for Chase Manhattan Bank in the fraud division, and we opened an office in Manila in the Philippines, and we had to oversee all the judge closes that I did. Judge closes are clo times when you close a credit card that's been open for less than six months just because you're suspicious. Anyway, there's an entry there. And the entry says, account closed, robots can't have credit cards. And then there was a supervisor overview from Manila, and the supervisor said, account closed, confirmed, robots cannot have credit cards. And then my supervisor said, okay, plug in your headset. I want you to be on the phone when I call this guy. So he calls the guy, and it turns out the guy had one of those tracheotomy voice box things where he talked like this. Yeah. yeah. No, he wasn't a robot. He had throat cancer, dumbass. Ah, <laughs> oh, that was a good time. And it, it was kind of kind of great, but kind of frightening, because on the one hand, the dude could have probably sued Chase Manhattan Bank for, like, a shitload of money. But on the other hand... It was horrifying to have to listen to a guy with one of those robot talker things laugh really, really hard. 
because he's going ha 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 Even in Calgaria, we honor the Macho King's exceptional slamming chivalry. Then and out, when he won a tournament called King of the Ring, Macho Man started calling himself the Macho King. Until the next King of the Ring tournament in which he did not win. But he would be carried to the ring wearing a crown and with a cape on a throne and the whole nine yards. Dude, check out the fridge. Macho Man sure know how to dress. He's like the best parts of the 80s all rolled up into one. Cal Carrow. <laughs> She's spooky. Randy Savage is truly one of the best. I hope I can be like him someday. You know what I'd do if I were her? Close her eyes once in a while. <laughs> yeah, hey, 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 I'm not judging. I'm just saying that humans have been closing their eyes for a long time. Hmm, strange. There's nobody here. Maybe they're in the back. Face paint on your feet? What kind of madman would do such a thing? It's a follow the tricks. Yeah. Take it all. Gather the war paint for our overlords. Oh, I like that. They're looting the shop. They're looting the shop. I, I would kick their asses if I were you. Oh, shit. Here's one. Take him alive and we'll melt him down to use his plastic as war paint. This guy's gonna get his ass beat. Oh, 
There you go. Perfect three count. Did I mention the ECW to you? Did I mention ECW to you? Extreme Championship Wrestling? I think you mentioned it once. There's one instance where a guy had his bicep torn open by barbed wire and he taped it together for the rest of the match. Huh. That's pretty extreme. Right? <laughs> Action figure speedos. Yeah, Isn't that what every man wants? <laughs> oh, yeah, table spot token. Yeah. No, oh no. No, I, I was shocked too. I thought you were going to have to go on a <laughs> quest. Somebody help, we're being robbed. Good salesman voice. Man, I was a salesman for a bit, and I once sold a guy who was looking for a $200 solar pool heater. A pool heater for $3,500. The reason I sold it to him was because the $200 pool heater is going to raise his pool's temperature two tenths of a degree Fahrenheit. And I explained that to him. I said, I'm happy to sell this to you if you want it, but it's only going to raise your pool temperature about two tenths of a degree. You probably have to notice it. So, what if I want to raise it? We got propane heaters, we got natural gas heaters, we got this, we got that. So tell me about your, your whirlwind propane heaters. I said, okay, we have propane on the lot. This is going to heat the pool. It's going to raise the temperature about like 10 degrees. Or as much as you want. I was in a skeezy salesman, just to be clear. One, two, three. Just make sure people know what they're trying. Buddy, that was amazing. Are you a superhero? Is that better? Buddy, that was amazing. Are you a superhero? <laughs> Superheroes are fake. I am a pro wrestler.
Well, whatever you are. Those were some macho moves, muchacho. Yes. Macho moves, muchacho. I like the sound of that. That's what Winston Cheshire. Those blasted Wrestle Raiders come down here to get supplies for the rituals to worship the Road Warriors, Hawk and Animal. I wish they could emulate someone more heroic. Like Randy Savage. Right? The dude was a legend. Someone more heroic. Anyways, what can you do, but it's on the house. Amigo, I'm here for a special order. Some samples for an ombre growing through an identity crisis. Ah, uh, I know the one. Can't decide between goth and surfer. Here they are. That's a reference to Sting. Yeah. You know Sting, the wrestler? Sounds familiar. Or maybe I'm thinking of Sting the Musician. Yeah, Sting the Musician. Sting the Wrestler once played Sting the Musician's bass in front of Sting the Musician. Oh, really? Yeah, how cool is that? That's pretty cool. Right? Pretty meta. And he was dressed as Duke Nukem before Duke Nukem ever existed. Thanks, muchacho. Uh, you're great. You have a nice and close There he is. Yep, it's me. I'm uh, trying to figure out what I'm going to do. Sounds like there's a flurry of activity there. Uh -huh. That's why I've been needing. <laughs> I want to know who stole my fucking pizza. <laughs> what are you laughing at? Is it funny? It's funny because you would say that. <laughs> <laughs> Go gore for me, go. You'll be intimidating, mysterious. I love it. I mean, his name's Neon Gravebird. Let's call it a duster, because it's, it's slick. Looks like it goes down to his calves. I don't know why he keeps twerking while he's wearing it, but hey. Same thing with Miley Cyrus. <laughs> The hottest she's ever been is when she was filming the We Can't Stop, uh, We Did Stop video. Yeah, right? Some negatives to make it positive. Oh yes, it was unexpectedly enlightening, sir. We do 
in fact. I meant enlightening about myself, sir. So, sir. Here we go. Please help Mr. Stretch's new students, and please help that poor B.E.W. wrestler regain his senses. Amen. What a great day, Macho Man. I feel like I've learned so much. I'm convinced now more than ever that we must always live our wrestling spirit and that the world needs heroes. Good night, Macho Man Randy Savage. Hey. Macho Mustacho. Macho Muchacho. Excuse me, pardon me. Macho more Macho. Am I right? Yeah. Always good to get an early start, sir. Them to go to the ring without taking your morning BM? I don't know. But this could be disastrous. I guess you're just going to have to roll, roll the dice, you know? Oh, well, that's not going to help. <laughs> Well, that just seems like an oversight, doesn't it? Pretty sick.
Uh, you kept mentioning our stable. Did you mean that sometimes we won't have to wrestle alone? if you hit those punching bags on your left. How you generate hype, sir? That's a bingo! Generates I with different actions. For example, the powerhouse that which Big Daddy Squeeze uses builds up the crowd dealing damage. Check this out. Oh yeah. Now it's with the shellman time. Like the magnificent dash talent, generate hype by taunting and flaunting. Sidekicks like jocks and say elicit cheers whenever they support another unit. Wily technicians pump up the crowd with their wrestling ability, which often inflicts status effects, allow the ominous Grim Jim to demonstrate. But never underestimate underdogs like Lochador, because the crowd loves it when they come back against the odds. Oh, snap! You are free to choose the hype type for any of your characters. Experiment to find the ones that suit your style or strategy. Fucking leprechaun. S something, yeah, yeah. For Andy Santos, I, I, I'd either be a... Uh, uh, Powerhouse or Shellman?
Uh oh, sounds like the Sandman just ran by. Either one, it's up to you. Depends how you're gonna play. Alright. Guys, here BAW is supposed to put on a dark match over in Boxwood. Yeah. Here to no way, that's incredible. Yeah, from what I hear, it's gonna be an open event. Anyone can take part. A dark match is a match that's not televised. And the results in dark matches typically don't matter as much. Okay. Because they're not televised. Yeah. Gotcha. Here's the catch. Since the event is in Boxwood, you know, the BW is going to try and get their guy into it. If BEW will be selecting a fighter, then they'd have to choose their championship title holder, right? All we'd have to do is become the BEW champion, then they'd have to pick us. Makes you think you can become the BEW champion. All I have to do is defeat the current champion, right? Look, hombre, all I need to do is beat the current BEW champion. Then I get to be in a PAW dog match and maybe earn a spot in PAW. It's not much of a plan. One moment, please. Turn. It's just on the phone with the VA. Oh, yeah. yeah, the surgery just started about 20 minutes ago, and they said that when it's done, they're gonna have someone, one of the surgeons, give me a call. Okay. I hope it goes well, man. I hope so too. I really do. I hope so. We. Thank you very much. He's really all I have at this point. I mean, I know I have friends and stuff, but I mean, in terms of family. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I went from seeing him every day we live together, and I haven't seen him in the last eight days.
That's that's all right. That's all right. He's he's on the table. They said he's doing great, and and everything is is going exactly as they want it to go. Oh, good. Yeah, yeah. You pretty much just called me to let me know that someone is going to contact me when the surgery's over. So that's that's ideal. You seen that poster, how he's holding a little creamer? Yeah, nice. Uh, yeah, right? <laughs> it's great. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty sick. Yeah. Kind of, uh, what's that called? Dark wave? Yeah, synth wave. Synth wave, that's what I'm thinking of. Yeah. What's on your hat? Nice. Nice. Yeah. If I Yep. Hey, hey, man, I I ain't never been to Vermont. For all I know, that there's a whole city under Lake Champlain. Yeah. It could be the next Atlantis. Exactly. That's exactly what I'm saying. Monster. You know where I used to live near? Munger Road in Illinois. You heard of Munger Road? They made a whole horror movie about it called, wait for it, Munger Road. Yeah. And literally, Nothing, the slightest, I had a girlfriend who lived just off Munger Road, and nothing the slightest bit creepy ever once happened to me on Munger Road. My car didn't die, I didn't see a ghost, I didn't hear children calling for help. No, nothing. Not a goddamn thing. No, no, it was just every time I drove there, I was, you know, focused on what I was focused on. I didn't see shit, didn't hear shit, didn't feel shit. The hair on the back of my neck, of which I have a lot, did not stand on end. I know, I know. It's like you live near this road that's so famous they make a goddamn movie about it, and you expect at least a little something. I heard it was a shit movie too. <laughs> wow. I call it like I see it, man. Back, Frogmeister. Just setting up like push to talk and then trying to figure out when I wanted to play myself. Oh, okay. Yeah, my mom's watching TV. I'm in the living room. Nice. I thought the sound was your sister yelling at you. Nope. Just the TV. Mm-hmm. We're watching an episode of Where's My Fucking Pizza? 
Dude, you my pizza. You my pizza. <laughs> You know what you should have done? You should have sold it. Yeah, then I'd have money. That'd be good. I'd eat it. Oh, why did I do that? Remember all the times you sold my fucking bike? <laughs> right. Look, I know this and is all a for an addiction. He did. He quit recently. Oh my! That means a lot. <laughs> Look, I know this isn't right to say about people you don't know very well, but I don't care much for your sister. Yeah, I would agree. I mean, I'm not gonna argue that. Uh, I'll, I'll just support you on it. How about that? There we go. Seems like kind of a jerk thing to do to sell stuff that doesn't belong to you. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I think I've never found that many ones. I've never sold anything else and stuff. Vic, I'm already 38. If we're gonna get on with this game, we have to get on with it. I'm probably gonna crash from old age 40. I promise I, I won't fail you. Actually, Mrs. Stress, you have a minute? <laughs> Sir, I'm ready. Ready to enter the world of professional wrestling. EAW is pulling a dark match over in Boxwood, and I plan to become the BEW champion and enter the match for a shot at the big time. I'm even going to I've even got my gimmick picked out. From now on, I will be the Spice himself, the South of the Border Savage, Muchacho Man or C. Tempestuous. My soul. I'm not afraid, Senor Stretch. And my mind is already made up. I have to do this. I know it is, kid. But I know there's no stopping you. So you have my blessing. But take me. This world has a way of stopping our goodness. So be very prepared to fight. But keep slamming. And greatness can be yours. Oh, see. And then we high-fived like brothers and I high-tailed it out of the locker room. <laughs> no more sleeping next to Randy Savage for me. Well, that sounds like a direct downgrade, doesn't it? Yeah, right. I mean, who doesn't want to sleep next to Randy Savage? 
got this statue, I guess we can always come back here to see. This is it, Randy. Oh yeah. Snap into a slim gym! The keep slamming and greatness can be yours. With these words, we'll judge a man enters the world. But can he find his way without losing his soul? We now turn to another looking at the same fate fixed stars, contemplating his own path. It was Jeff Jarrett and Jake the Snake Roberts in the studio. Uh, it's Brink Logan. Fireworks. That is so cute. Show us a be about to begin. Listen, brother. There you are. I should have known you'd be here. You're so predictable. I like to think of it as being reliable. Yeah, speaking of being reliable, do you think we could go over this script again real quick? You didn't read it, did you, brother? Come on, dude. I've been busy with that Hockey 94 tournament. Listen, brother, you're such a hoser sometimes, stag. Next, you're going to tell me that you didn't practice our walk, either. Okay. Come on, bro. Come on, brother. We've got a little bit of time to go over it. Stag Logan has joined your party. And I got an achievement. Sweet. It's always good to get achievements, isn't it? Master Fresh, what you got to say? Oh. <laughs> yeah, that's what I got to say. Most times, at least. Oh, yeah, Flamingo Fringe Macho Statue. Yeah. Can't believe we We're gonna go to now. Oh, NCW. NCW. National Conference of Wrestling. Yeah! There you go. That's probably it. That was my nickname in high school. <laughs> Oh no, I have no idea why it was. They just all called the Pond Fork. Huh. I had somebody who used to call me Sean for some reason. Just one day he was like, Your name's Sean, bro. Uh, like, what? He's like, Yeah, that's one of the bodies. And he did. It, no, it does. With an H or an S E A? I think it's S E A N. You don't look like an S E A N, Sean. I could see you being an S H A W N, Sean. I agree. Yeah. Hey, check out the finished town sign. Let's get over to the east side of town in the snow globe, brother.
He's wearing short sleeves in the snow. What a tough guy. Must be a northerner. Is that Mr. Potato Head? No, man. I, I grew up in the suburbs of Chicago. It hit negative 20 at some points, and I still didn't wear short sleeves in the snow. You know why? Because I'm a northerner, not a knucklehead. <laughs> what a clever potato. All right, I'll be back shortly. Just like the prophecy, I have returned. Bride a step to me, you'll get burned. Cause I've got lyrics and you ain't got none. If you come to battle, bring a shotgun. Whoa. Dropping fat beats right there. Who can tell me what song that's from? Oh, I yes, the thick. I heard thick first. I don't know if you were saying the same thing at the same time. Froggy. Well, I had to think about it. It's like, I had to fast forward in, the, in my mind to the chorus. Yeah, right? That's a good song. You know what else I realized is like a really good song? Huh? Crisscross. Jump. It was the two kids who wore their clothing backwards and wrapped. You just have to search for Chris Cross. Not Chris Christopherson. Totally different group. Sending it to you, Thick Master. Well, then I'm sending it to Frog Dog so my search doesn't feel fruitless. Okay. Do it. Yeah, I know the song. Produced by Jermaine Dupree. Know who he is, Thick? No. Frog Dog? Who's what? Who's Jermaine Dupree? No idea. Ah, uh, he uh, was an artist and he produced a bunch of records like uh, DeBrat, Mariah Carey, Usher, Destiny's Child.
Okay. It was a big deal back in the 90s. Yeah, I don't. I don't remember that news at all. You remember Destiny's Child? I do indeed. He it's produced the first too. album. Oh. Wow. Yeah. You remember the Mariah Carey track, Always Be My Baby? I don't know much of Mariah Carey's work. Uh, that was in 95. You were probably too still in diapers. Probably. Yeah, the log cabin cabin. <laughs> nice, I just noticed that. Nice map. Kind of advanced and complicated, if you ask me. These dog sleds? It's Sally. Hey, Sally. Snapshot Sally. What is this guy? Girl. She looks a lot like Sally. Could be. Or her wife? Oh my gosh. Gaming is so woke now. Yeah, right? I can't handle this. I'm gonna smash my stuff. That'll show them. They're not going to come and fix my stuff. I smash my stuff all the time. They never fix it. You want to know something weird that happened to me one time? Yes. I got pissed off and I threw my keyboard. And I swear, the corner of my keyboard broke. And I took the pieces and I kind of like stuck them together. Not with glue, but just like put them together, left them on my couch for a little bit, I came mm -hmm. back, and my keyboard wasn't broken anymore, like the pieces had like, melded together or something. Yeah. I mean, you both know I'm a skeptic, but that's hard to argue with. Let me tell you another situation that's hard to argue with. The day after my grandfather died, I was staying at my grandmother's house with my mom. And when we went out to go to his memorial service, there was a deer standing by her car. Oh, yeah. That's not that big a deal, right? There's fucking deer everywhere. But this deer let her walk up to him and pet him. And I've never seen that happen before in my life. That's pretty cool. You're pretty spiritual creatures too. Like, uh, Native Americans used to worship deer. Some of them did. 
I had a Native American friend from the Muckleshoot tribe who said the thing that pissed him off the most was people homogenizing Native Americans. Because some of them were great, and they used every part of the animal, and they used all the land that they could, and they they hunted and only need, hunted what they needed. And then there were other tribes that were just fucking bastards. Because when you think Native American, what's the first animal you think of? I was going to say buffalo. The second would be horse. But they only had horses for about 200 years prior to the arrival of Englishmen. And some of the tribes would get kind of kind of pissy about the horses. They did not like their horses taken. They did not like other tribes to have horses. Yeah, but like I said, they only had those for like 200 years out of their entire history in North America. Hey, if I'm rambling on too much, feel free to let me know. Oh, that's cool. I like stories and stuff, so it's all good. One of the most embarrassing moments of my life. You know how toddlers, like, just sing songs and they make up words and they're, like, making up the song as they go along and it's a bunch of nonsense words? All right, well, I, vi I was playing a game online with him. And I heard his toddler in the background singing a song. And I said, you know what? I fucking love that. I love when kids just make up these songs and make up these words. And it, it, it's so creative and raw and it's great. And he said, actually, he didn't make that up. That's a song in my tribe's native language. And I was so embarrassed. Oh my goodness. Right. Questions? Questions? Question mark? You said wait. I thought you had questions. I think I said word or something. Oh. No, I thought Froggy said wait. Oh. No, I didn't say anything. I was in the oh. bathroom. Okay, yeah, but I was just so embarrassed. He thought it was absolutely hilarious how embarrassed I was. Found Sally's second wife. Penalty box Pam. Like to get in her penalty box if you know what I mean. <laughs> no, no, don't touch me there. This is my penalty box. That's one of the top ten candidates for the title of my autobiography. <laughs> Well, that's, that's just a log cabin, not a log cabin cabin. This is a log cabin cabin. Exactly, exactly. What's the uh, spot differences from it? This one has well, there's, an hmm? there's another third of a building on a log cabin cabin. You can actually go in a log cabin cabin.
that's why they always say, take your dick stabbing, stabbing to the log cabin, cabin. Oh yeah, I've heard that so many times before. Yeah, it was, um, I think they said it in Macbeth. <laughs> Sounds about right. Yeah, yeah. Shakespeare liked this, his dick stabbing, stabbing. In the log cabin. Yeah, exactly. That was more a result of him enjoying the stabbing, stabbing than anything else. Neither sausage fest nor oyster fest. You know who really likes fried chicken? Everyone. Have you from the colonel? Have you ever met anyone, anyone who said, no, I don't like fried chicken? Like, ever. No, can't say that I haven't. I haven't. Me either. That's a good point. Okay, yeah, hopefully it turns into a KFC taco, though. Probably not, but... I heard something about it reopening, but I wasn't sure why. Yeah, I hope it opens up again soon. You think they're gonna throw a combination Pizza Hut Taco Bell in there? I hope they do. Because I love Taco Bell, and we need another one in the town. Or even, like, relatively close. I like the fact that they combined three restaurants in the Tuck a pizza bell. It was it was fancy. Everybody could get what they wanted. I want chicken. No, I want pizza. No, I want mom to die. And, and like everybody could get what they wanted. Pizza. That's a combination Pizza Hut and Taco Bell. Remember that song? Pizza Bell? No, it's called. Uh, let me see, I'll look it up. It was by the band Das Racist. <laughs> I'm going to send it to you first, Froggy. Because you're the current instant message window I have open. And then I'm sending it to Thick. The lyrics are, I'm at the Pizza Hut. I'm at the Taco Bell. I'm at the combination Pizza Hut and Taco Bell. What caused that lovely Spanish guitar to end? It was kind of a lovely tune, wasn't it? Yeah. 
It's a shame you can't... There's not a button prompt like press X to tell him keep playing the song or I'm going to burn your house down. Froggy's jamming out to that track I sent right now. He can't even be bothered to reply because he's jumping around the room dancing like a madman. Yeah, crazy disco dancing, you know. I'm John Travolta right now. That's exactly what I was picturing, was disco dancing to the track Combination Pizza Hut and Taco Bell. Yeah, I didn't really know what else, how else to dance, so I just kind of took disco and was like, you know what, this works then. Alright, I want to make sure that you don't misinterpret this as a race thing. I would tell this to anyone who asked me the same question. Okay? Crumping. No, he has the correct dance to combination Pizza Hut and Taco Bell. I said crumping. I'm not just assuming you can crump because you're black. No, you're from Vermont. I don't assume anyone in Vermont knows how to crump by default. Race regardless. I don't even know what that is, to be honest. <laughs> oh, man, you gotta look up crumping. Marge Simpson knows how to crump. Why don't you? Because she's on a show that can supposedly tell the future. Maybe she learned it from the future. No, oh, crumping is sick. I feel like I know what it is, but I'm not sure. Is it like when you put your hand out and you act like you're driving a car? No, not at all. It's impossible to explain. It kind of looks like someone who's too drunk to stand up combined with someone who is an elite athlete. Now I gotta find an example of crumping for both of you. Goddamn Vermonters. <laughs> yup. We're always the last to learn about anything. Fashion trends. That's true. Look at these dudes. These dudes are sick. If I could dance like this, I would literally, literally take out flood insurance because I'd be drowning in pussy. World Championship? They have a World Championship for us? Crumpin'? Of course! What are you, un American? You Canadian or something, bro? I mean, everybody does think I'm from Canada since I live in Vermont. Well, I mean, Vermont is America's Canada. That's true. I mean, it's progressive, it has maple syrup. Everybody's strangely nice, for the most part. Exactly, exactly. I heard a description of the Midwest, where I'm from, described as when the politeness of, where the politeness of Canada meets the hospitality of the South. Oh, 
know we're the kind of people that don't ask you to leave until we've wanted you to leave for several hours already. Look, it's all about impressing the crowd. It's about strutting and flaunting your skills. Where do the actual walk on? You'll be able to choose various elements like an intro, music, passive outgoing effects, and an outro. Oh, but look at this crumpin' dude. Yeah, that looks like interpretive dancing, but like a more stylized robot dance. Yeah. But like, is that the perfect song, dance for that song? Sure. I'm at the combination Pizza Hut Taco Bell. Intermediate options or actions to perform while walking down the ramp. Nail a button, press to perform them. If that's what gets you pressing, that's a pretty low bar. These guys are nuts, man. I'm still watching this video. <laughs> it's definitely nuts, but like, you just walk up and start doing that to a girl. I don't know. I don't know why they press a button. Like, I don't mean nuts as in not impressive. I mean nuts as in, like, you could give me a hundred years and I would not be able to get my body to move that way. Yeah, I agree. It's talented. But it's, it's one of those things where people know what crumping is. And it, like, you crump in an environment when it's... It's, you know, no, you don't look nearly as creepy. That's cool. Yeah, that's cool. This is part of my favorite game when I lived near Chicago. It was called... Bluetooth or schizophrenic? <laughs> and you'd walk somebody down, watch somebody walking down the street, and they're dressed in normal clothes, you know? It's not like they're dressed like a homeless person, they're not dressed like a businessman, and you just see them constantly yelling, No! No! That's unacceptable! This is, this is bullshit. I can't put up with this anymore. I'm not going to put up with this anymore. And the closer they got to you, the further away, the more points you got. But you would try to guess if they had a Bluetooth in their ear or if they were just schizophrenic and kind of wandering the streets. Hmm. That's actually a pretty funny game. I would definitely play it. It, it became the point where it was a matter of safety slash a game. Because some of these guys, you know, like, okay, they're, they're just yelling at somebody who's nowhere. That's one thing, okay? But if they're yelling at pigeons, then you got to be careful. Because they may identify you as an enemy. You know what I mean? Yeah. Un unmedicated mental illness is fucking ugly. It really is. I agree. Reminds me of the game Gunshot or Door Slam. You ever play that? No, I've never played it. Yeah, played it with my friends in the ghettos of Savannah, Georgia. You gotta 
guess if the gun, if the sound is a gunshot or a door slam. No joke. I got a cousin who's a cop in Savannah. Oh yeah. Yeah, but if I tell you his name, you're gonna think I'm bullshitting you. <laughs> you promise? You promise to believe that I'm being a hundred percent sincere when I tell you his name? Sure. Ron Smith. It is a generic name. I'll give you that 100%. His father's name was John Smith. <laughs> he has a brother Richard and a brother Robert. But I swear on my life, I have a cousin named Ronald Smith who was a police officer in Savannah, Georgia. No, it's not that interesting, but it's something to talk about, you know? That froggy character has gotten far too quiet, and I'm getting suspicious. Yeah, this is normal for me. You spacing out, Cosmonaut? No. My mom pushed the top. So it's not broadcasting everything. Oh, okay, cool. Oh. Yeah, unless you want to hear TV. No, it's okay. Tell your folks, your online friends, say hey. Okay. They're probably worried that you only watch anime and snuggle your waifu pillow knowing that you have friends from all over the world will tickle their fancy yeah I'm actually I'm, they probably think I'm crazy because they're like why do you trust people from the internet you don't know them you've never seen them dude you're not they extending could be the serial evil. killers and yeah, I'm like I, that uh, could be anybody, to be fair. I could be a serial killer, but you know what? I haven't asked for your name or your address or any of your information other than your state. And, I mean, yeah, I'm sure it would be easy to track down the only black guy in Vermont. But, honestly, I don't have the money for gas. Yeah, it's expensive. It is expensive. I can't afford that. I'm all the way in Arkansas, man. If somebody was going to kill you, it'd be thick. Uh -oh. I mean, yeah, he might have been a friend for years and years and years, but that's not much gas money. You smell what I'm stepping in, Hump Slice? Yep. Right now, you're both anime fans, right? I am a fan of British culture. Do you know what someone from who is a fan of British culture is called? No, no, no. They're called an Anglophile. Do you know the more pejorative term to call a fan? A fan? Excuse me, a fan of British culture. A tea boo. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. So I just want you guys to know that you can give me just as much shit as I give you. I love you, but. We're men and we're friends, so we're going to get give each other shit. That's just how that works. At least you told me before. No, it's how male friendships work. You give people shit. I realized it may have been coming across as too perfect to find fault with.
I'm not a hundred percent perfect. If you know, anybody is, it would be on your What just dress you? Probably the second one. Exactly. Exactly. Oh, I got a question for you, K-pop, J-pop aficionado. Yeah. Somebody put a song for me that was by K-gal or K-girl. Are you familiar with this? No, I am not. Sounds like a Korean person. I don't listen to much Korean music. The last person I listened to that was Korean was Psy, uh, the guy who did Gundam Style. Ah. Uh. I thought you were into K-pop. Uh, not really. More into J-pop, J-pop, J-rock, J-metal. Or no. Uh, j screamo A bunch of different ones. X-scale. Is that it? Mm-hmm. Never heard. Of that. It's XG, as in George. A Japanese girl group based in South Korea. So is that K-pop or J-pop? Cause J-pop? It's J-pop, but in Korea, I guess. Have you heard of them? No. Apparently, they've been around way back in 2002. What's the deal? Have you been slipping? We? No. I probably just don't listen to that type of music. Japanese girl group based in South Korea. The group was formed by Axe X, a subsidiary of Avex, and is composed of seven members. June, Chisa, Hinata, Duria, Kokona, Maya, and Harvey. That's a sexy name for a lady, isn't it? How many times have you ever said, This is my girlfriend. Her name is Harvey. The thing that creeps me out about K-pop and J-pop is how young they look. Combined with the stories about how harshly they're treated. Am I alone in that? What was that? I said the thing that bothers me about K-pop and J-pop is these... The combination of how young they look, combined with how harshly they're treated. I want to hear from the expert, though. Do you think it's kind of disconcerting hearing about how J-pop and K-pop stars are treated? Uh, they are treated pretty poorly, and they do have to work like a lot, a lot more people think. Oh, it's not just like oh, we're doing one show a day. It's like oh, they do a lot. Yeah. I'm not saying abolish it, I'm just saying there needs to be some unions put into place. It's true, I definitely agree. Hey, how about no more than five shows a day? I'll be back. I need another quart of beer.
Hey, I've returned, so you better stop talking about me. Uh-oh. I know. I know. I can hear it. I can hear it even when I, I have my computer off and my headphones off. Oh. Well, uh, um, he is a little uh, son of a bitch. Or that, or whatever. It depends on whether or not I greeted you properly this morning. That's true. Greeting is definitely a factor, I guess. I said greeting, not greeting, you sick fuck. Okay. <laughs> Am I getting yelled at for my language? No. Honest answer from all of you. Can anyone hear my language? No, I mean uh, people other than you and Froggy. No. I'm, I'm, I'm using uh, headphones. Okay, cool. So I could say yeah. horrible, horrible things about your sister with no repercussions? No repercussions whatsoever. Okay. She seems like... Okay. This is going to seem extreme, and I apologize. Do you believe in aliens? Um, to be honest, I think it'd be kind of stupid to not believe it, but that's just me. Here's how I see how it. infinite okay. the universe is. With as infinite as the universe is and as many possibilities as there are, I don't necessarily disbelieve in aliens. Okay, I don't believe in them because I haven't seen proof of them, but I don't disbelieve in them. That said, your sister strikes me as the kind of person I'm genuinely afraid that would get abducted by aliens because of the example that she would set for the rest of humanity. Well, I'm not doing any of these tests until I get my fucking pizza back. Okay, well, no. You're gonna do what? No way. Yeah, no. <laughs> okay. <don't> swear. <laughs> yeah, no. No, she'd just be like, fuck you. I'm gonna... I'm, I'm not doing this. And then they d disintegrate her and think that all humans are that awful. That's true. That's I kind of shit that, that keeps me up at night. <laughs> okay. And not while I'm out on the line, but feel free to let her know that there are people who are genuinely afraid of what would happen to the human race if she were to ever get abducted by aliens because of the horrible, horrible impression she would leave on them. If anything, she'd probably just make fun of them. Be like, you're not human, blah 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 blah. Be like, you're gonna get it. Oh, that reminds me. I have uh, a gift that uh, if she were to visit me, she's welcome to choke on. What's that? It's my penis. You're literally bringing the entire species down. The world would be a better place without you. 
but not like in a disrespectful way. When I say choke on my dick, I mean it as respectful as possible. I want to make that clear, okay? those monks who douse themselves in gasoline and set themselves on fire? Okay. You think she'd be willing to try that? Way. She's probably chicken out. Like, she couldn't even sit down, probably. Get as far as, like, oh. Uh, oh my no. god. I gotta carry these three gallons of gasoline for how far? Oh my god! I'm not carrying this. You can't. I can't be set on fire. That's gonna ruin my air. <laughs> Yo. I don't mean any disrespect by this. I want to make that clear. He sounds like a genuinely terrible excuse for a human being. Like, if she called herself a human being, I would ask her several questions to prove that she was. Like what? Well. Like the Voight Kampf test in Blade Runner? Uh, I'm not familiar with that one. You saw a turtle on the side of the road and you turned it onto its back. Why did you do that? Why did you do that? And then their circuits overload and you start seeing sparks come from their ears and their eyes and they don't understand the question. And you realize that this person was just built here as oh, right, boys. evil. Evil. Pure evil. There's nothing we can do to excise this evil from this person. I, I, I call on you every Sunday to put every nickel, every dime you have into the collection plate. And every time you do, we try to excise the evil from this person. And clearly, the dollar amount is not enough. If you could please dig deep. Now, I'm not talking, I'm not talking $20 bills, $50 bills. I'm talking, get a cash advance on your credit card and put about $500, $600 in here. Because I think that if we have that kind of faith, if we have that kind of faith to call upon, this devil Jezebel would be gone. Have you tried that? Well, I'm gonna be real, that seems kind of short-sighted on your part. I guess. Or, or maybe I'm just lazy. Easily tolerable. What you need to do, and it's not hard, is rent a large tent and have a religious revival service in there. And you need to make sure your southern accent is as pronounced as it can possibly be. And you use as many biblical terms in this as possible. Like she shorn the hair from Samson, this mistress Delilah needs to be punished. We've tried burying her in the ground for 18 days. She came back up. We tried 
cutting off her head and her tongue and her arms and her legs and her bosoms, but they just grew back. Uh, did I offend you? I'm sorry. Yeah, food is good. I don't know. I don't even know what we're going to have.